Hello, and welcome to In Conversation. I'm Dinesh Verma, filling in for Ramesh, who's off this week. And I'm Shilpa Alim Chandani. Well, folks, I think we need to spend some time this morning talking about the natural disaster that occurred in Haiti and everything that we've seen, all the images we've seen on TV in the aftermath of that. Well, I mean, I think it's clear that a disaster of this magnitude brings out both the best and the worst in people. Uh, in terms of how people have responded, I was very interested to read an article in the Washington Post about how many religious differences that existed among Haitians before this point seem to be disappearing in the wake of the disaster. Uh, Haiti is a mostly Christian nation, and there are many different Christian denominations of Protestant and, and Catholic persuasions, but in many other circumstances, there's an effort to kind of prove that one person's faith is truer or superior than another person's faith. Now, when everyone is in the same condition, living on the streets, there are basically open-air churches. Everyone has gathered together. There's religious singing until 2 o'clock in the morning. This is what is people keeping people going, is their faith in, in God, in each other, whatever they may uh, call their religious beliefs. And there's been a tremendous outpouring of support from all over the world. And it mobilized very quickly. It, it started here in the U.S. with uh, President Obama almost immediately announcing uh, whatever aid we could send to Haiti would be on its way. He pledged $100 million, I believe, in order to help with the effort. He sent Marines down there. And now um, USAID, I believe, is overseeing all the relief efforts on behalf of the United States government. And Rajiv Shah, who is one of the highest-ranking Indian Americans in uh, the government, is spearheading that effort. So we've seen unprecedented levels of support flowing in from around the world. And here in the D.C. area, people have been coming out uh, to the Haitian embassy, bringing donations. And it's really heartening to see this kind of response to this type of disaster. But, Dinesh, we also know that uh, disasters like this can bring out the worst in people, too, isn't it? That's right. What, what is it that you have been reading about people taking advantage of the situation? Well, the unfortunate reality is any time you have large sums of money anywhere, and, and in this case it's large sums of money being donated to these relief organizations, there are people that want to prey upon that money and they want to... Uh, try to deceive people out of their money. So there are a lot of these uh, fake charities that have been set up overnight. They've sprung up overnight trying to solicit donations, and who knows where this money is actually going to. There was a story which I haven't investigated it, but uh, Wyclef John, who is one of the most pr more prominent Haitians that lives here in the United States, he has his own charity called Yele, and there's a probe into the finances of Yele and some questionable deals with uh, was Wyclef John benefiting from financial transactions. Again, I don't know any of the details, but the bottom line is if you're giving money to a relief organization, you want to do your homework and you want to make sure that you're giving to a reputable organization that will put their numbers up on their website and tell you, if you give a dollar, this is how much of your dollar that will actually go to the relief efforts and this the rest of this money will, will fund our administrative operations. For those of you who are looking for a way that you can make a contribution and help in the relief efforts, you can visit mhcnetworks.org and make a direct donation to the Red Cross Haiti Relief Development Fund. For many of us in the South Asian community, seeing all of the coverage of the Haiti earthquake reminds us of 2005 when a devastating earthquake hit South Asia, India and Pakistan, both very badly affected. Interestingly enough, all these years later, a Chinese road building firm in Pakistani controlled Kashmir has discovered a van that contained 17 bodies that went missing during the 2005 earthquake. Now, apparently, when they found this van, uh, many of the relatives of those who are missing immediately came to that site, and they have been able to identify, I think, all but five of those bodies. It's, it's so devastating to think that all these years later you're still digging and uncovering um, the remnants of such a terrible disaster. Yeah, and you know, whenever there's a natural disaster of this t magnitude that occurred in Haiti, uh, it, it's always an issue as to how you deal with the number of bodies after, after the des disaster. 
if you look back to the tsunami that occurred a few years ago, uh, in many instances, they didn't have enough refrigeration, refrigerated equipment to keep bodies cool so they could be identified and then get them over to the families for a proper burial. So they actually ended up putting them in shallow graves in the beach areas. And the thought was, later on, we're going to exhume the bodies and try to do the best we can in terms of identifying them so that family members can know what happened to their loved ones at least. But in Haiti, there's just not the same infrastructure there for this. So what you see is a lot of mass graves. They, they just, people are being buried in mass. There's no uh, central authority there uh, that's assisting with re identifying any of these bodies or, or coming up with accounts. So we may never know the true magnitude of what's happened here in Haiti. I think in other situations there have been photos taken of those that have died and before they're buried or some kind of um, tissue sample or something taken so that like you said, later we'd be able to identify um, who had passed away and actually know how many people had died as well. In this case, we really don't know if that will be possible at all, uh, but the relief efforts seem to be much more organized now that more people are on the ground and they're able to mobilize the supplies that are coming in. Moving on to another topic, if there's one U.S. company you don't want to mess with, it's Google. And I have to say, I'm a big fan of Google. I love Google. I, I use a lot of their features, like the new Google Voice feature. I have it integrated with my phone, and it works great. But Google recently uh, uncovered that a number of cyber attacks were aimed at Google and Gmail accounts, and they, they actually tried to figure out where these attacks were coming from, and they determined that they originated from China. And this is somewhat timely because there's been a lot of coverage in the press recently about how China is trying to censor Google and Google's operations over there. And it's been an ongoing battle for the last few years. So as part of this uh, investigation that Google did, they uncovered that not only were their systems targeted as part of this cyber attack that originated from China, 34 other U.S. companies were also part of the same cyber attack including some prominent ones like Northrop Grumman, Dow Chemical, Adobe Systems. And these attacks were aimed at exploiting security flaws in some of the software. And this has taken up a whole nother level now because in the past when China has uh, done anything in terms of trade or, or anything that's tried to step on the toes of the United States, so to speak, the United States has been very cautious about their response. They've backed down. But this, this time, there's actually...